Hello teachers and good afternoon. Magandang magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat and welcome to our um, live stream no, for today. Okay, so thank you po so much for once again no, joining us here in our um, July series session. Okay? And uh, for today, no, iba naman ng tools na pag-uusapan natin for today. Okay, last time, uh, since ang ating July series is all about Google Workspace Essentials, so pumili tayo ng apat 
na pinaka essentials no sa ating Google Workspace. Of course, hindi naman to ano no, um uh, set on stone. Of course, meron tayong mga kanya-kanya mga favorites. Pero ito kasi yung mga tools sa talagang malalaki at saka talagang central no to the to the op, to the um, um operations saka functionalities ng ating Google Workspace um accounts. Okay? So, uh, pinili natin to mga tools to specifically no, to help you maximize no yung um, yung ating Google Workspace accounts. Okay. So, before we start teachers no at, uh, para sa hapon na to bago tayo magsimula um to our uh, into our um, uh, Google Classroom complete walkthrough no year 2022. Hindi masyado madaming nagbago though no. Okay? Uh, siguro yung nakagad yung disclaimer natin for today pero baka lang maganda rin to no. It's also good opportunity for us to review and to revisit no Google Classroom, okay? And mamaya, pag-uusapan din natin, I will try to justify kasi uh, marami, makami mga educators tayo na i-abandon na kagad yung Google Classroom just because one, we're transitioning to hybrid. Second, okay, is that uh, people might be thinking no, na eh, eh, mag-go back to school naman, uh, on-site naman na tayo by, uh, by November 2, 2022. No? Can you believe that? No? Napaka-surprising uh, no, nung... Um, ng ating uh, declaration na yun, no? And of course, teachers, no, medyo, syempre, we also feel the, our um, uh, DepEd public school teachers, no, kasi, um, kaka, uh, sana nga, nakapagpahinga talaga, no, pero, yun yung kakas- kakatapos lang halos ng kanilang mga graduation rights, moving up ceremonies, okay? Tapos, I, nani, uh, I think, no, if I'm not mistaken, yung ating yung mga public school teachers ay sumabak din kagad sa kanilang RPMS, saka sa kanilang, um, mga evaluations, no? Okay, and then pagkatapos noon, okay, mag I t- if I'm not mistaken, no? please do correct me. Alam ko malapit na rin yung ating brigada skwela at saka preparation na for next school year at uh, pasukan na no sa August 20 uh, 22, no? Parang parang nasa yung pahinga ng mga teachers natin. No? That's uh, I think the good question, no? Okay? Uh, but I hope no uh, our teachers, okay, especially in the public um um, um schools no okay, are able to actually you know get some rest kasi kailangan kailangan natin yan kasi magshi-shift na naman tayo ng modality natin no come next school year tapos again uh, at the back of our minds we're going to start thinking again about um Google Classroom at napakalaking preparations to hindi po yan basta-basta okay so uh, wishing um all our teachers okay both from the private and the public um schools no uh, that you're able to rest teachers, no? Um, kahit kano po kakaunti siguro, no? Okay? Uh, because that's uh, very important, okay? As we prepare for next school year. But before we start, teachers, okay? I'd like to greet first our teachers in the chat, no? Are here as early ang aga naman, eh, teacher Arlene, na, no? Okay? 12.33 p.m., okay? And uh, good afternoon, teacher Alan Brutas. Good afternoon, ang aga din. Matt Pad with teacher Annabelle, okay? Pastor Manny Garcia. Uh, Venice Lugto. Teacher Emelda Publico, yeah, congratulations Teacher Emelda sa inyong um, Microsoft Kit, no? Okay? I think ang iniintay na lang Teacher Emelda, no, ay ang confirmation sa ating CPD event next week, okay? And of course, Teacher Catherine Fernandez, Teacher Nimpa Cruz, Teacher John Leroy San Luis, Teacher Gemma Rivera, Teacher Annie Rose Rojas, Teacher Jasmine Leoneda Abueva, Teacher Ar- Teacher Fresha May Dalumpines. Teacher Carlo Bagayawa, okay? Teacher Ria De La Cruz, Teacher Jesus Katangi, of course, no? Uh, Teacher Jeffrey Beltran, abangan pa si Je- Teacher Jeffrey Beltran, okay? Sa ating sessions next week, okay? Teacher Portia May, Teacher Shari Christine Peñaflor, Teacher Maria Regina Amores, okay? Teacher Alex Javier Alvarez, okay? Teacher Hitish uh, Kumar Sharma, okay? Teacher Raquel Manawis, okay? uh, Teacher Sheila Marie Sanchez, okay? Teacher Lamberto Pilatan, Teacher Jezebel Lausa, Teacher Maridic Miranda, okay? Teacher Arnel Fortes, okay? Teacher Petrohen, okay? Petrohela Kravacic, and Teacher Maria Guia G. Villarmino, Teacher Maria Linda Habla, ayan, dumami na, no? okay? And of course, no, I'll end with Teacher Estelita Gregorio, no? and of course, maraming maraming salamat, okay? Um, I don't know if this is Teacher Rob, Robin Godoy Islas, okay? Um, I don't know, no? May meron kasing amount, no? Hindi ko alam kung that's... Uh, usually kasi may mga nag-sending kasi ng mga uh, greetings, no? With um, some amounts, no? Maraming maraming salamat for that, no? I think $10 yun, no? Okay? Maraming salamat for that, okay? So again, teachers, maraming salamat po. And um, once again, no? Welcome to our July series, okay? Episode number 
2, okay, which is on Google Classroom Complete Walkthrough. Okay? So, simula na kagad natin, teachers. Huwag natin patagalin so we can enjoy the rest of our weekend okay? uh, para sa linggong ito. No? And again, uh, let's, um, let's start our session okay? with uh, our Google Classroom Complete Walkthrough. By the way, teachers, okay? huwag kakalimutan that this is a certified session. You'll be getting a, um, a certificate of participation. Okay? I hope that those who attended last time uh, for the Google Drive walkthrough, nakuha na po natin, kakapadala ko lang ng inyong mga certificates. Okay? For those who have not yet um, received it, please wait a little bit. No? Minsan, nadidali na ng konti, minsan matagal na ng konti. Okay? But anyway, similar to our session last week, no? um, all the attendees today and those who will be successfully able to evaluate our session for today, um, and of course, no, um, will be able to, um, uh, ano, no, to get a certificate. Okay? Ayan, okay? Uh, teacher Jezebel Lauza, no, happy birthday po. Ayan, okay? Uh, maligayang maligayang kaarawan, Teacher Jezebel Lauza, no? And of course, for all of those who are celebrating your sessions today, ah, your, your, ano, no, your, uh, your birthdays, okay, today. Talaga session, celebrating your sessions today, okay? And of course, Teacher, by the way, no, siguro lang, bago talaga tayo magsimula, no? Parang ang daming delay naman ni Sir Franco, no, okay? Hindi pa tayo makapagsimula. Gusto ko lang po magpasalamat, teachers, kasi... Uh, we have now um, achieved no a milestone in our um, in our um, uh, community okay? here at our YouTube channel. Okay? We are now at ninety thousand. Sorry, no, um, ninety thousand. No, at mali yung ano natin. Okay? Hindi po yan ninety lang. No, para ang lit naman yan. No, okay, ninety thousand subscribers na po tayo ngayon, teachers. No? So thank you, thank you, teachers. Na maraming salamat. Uh, for all of those who have subscribed, okay? sa mga hindi pa po nakapag-subscribe, no? please do subscribe. And please do recommend our channel no? to other teachers as well. Okay? Kasi um, marami naman po siguro silang matututunan sa ating uh, YouTube channel. So thank you so much okay, for that. No? Okay? So tuloy-tuloy na tayo teachers sa ating um, 100k subscribers no? to our uh, sil silver play uh, button. Okay? So teachers, let us, uh, ano, no? please do help us no? uh, reach out to more educators in our country. Yeah, thank you so much teacher Ar uh, Arlene no, for that. Of course, isa sa mga solid um ano natin um supporters natin, si teacher Arlene. Okay. So teachers, let's uh, begin no, and let's start our session okay on um on Google Classroom um complete walkthrough, okay? So for today, um these are the things that we're going to try to cover no. The first one is that we're try to um uh, do an introduction to Google Classroom, okay? And then of course, okay, uh, we'll do the setting up of classes in Google Classroom, all the settings on how to start uh, using Google Classroom. Okay? And of course, yung mga integrated tools natin in Google Classroom, especially Google Calendar, Google Drive, okay? and among others. Okay? So, uh, pupuntahan di natin yung mga tools na yan. And of course, no, halos lahat naman ng Google Workspace tools are properly integrated as well into our Google Classroom. And we'll also see later on no, how all of those no, are actually able to function or able to... Um, I don't know, uh, uh, or how we are able to use all of those um, um, tools now within yeah. Google Classroom. Okay, so let's begin the chase and let's start okay, our exploration of Google Classroom. Okay, but before we do that, okay, syempre, i-contextualize muna natin. Okay, um, uh, yung, yung why, no? Okay, because uh, just like I always tell at our teachers, no, when we are doing technology integration, when we are teaching something, or we're going to do an innovative uh, program, we always ask the why. Okay? In a similar manner, okay? when we talk about uh, Google Classroom in the context of learning management systems, okay? kailangan natin pag-usapan no? yung why. Okay? Bakit natin kailangan gumamit ng Google ng learning management system? What, what's it for? Okay? Um, for for all we know, no, tayong lahat po, yung mga, siyempre, lalo na yung mga uh, batang 90s no, and 80s and 70s, no, we grew up in schools okay, without a learning management system. Okay? Talaga ang, ang the learning ano, no, uh, experiences okay, and the learning processes okay, happen inside the classroom and that's it. Okay? There's no like um, another platform where we can actually learn. Okay? But that's what we want to explore for today. Okay? We wanted to explore okay, why we need to use or why is it important to utilize LMS specially, okay? These are very good questions for our teachers who will be going back to on-site learning, okay? So why do we still continue to, uh, why do we still need an LMS even if we're going back on-site, okay? And with that, gentle uh, uh, teachers, no, okay? Uh, let's explore further, no? And what's the definition of um, 
of uh, ano no, a learning management system. Okay, so when we talk about a learning management system, it's basically a software application or web-based technology used to plan, implement, assess a specific learning process. Okay, so it means that uh, teachers know basically LMS is supposed to help you uh, implement and conduct and plan or even design no, okay? um, an entire uh, learning process. Now, usually, of course, okay? Um, learning management systems are online, okay? So, therefore, it supports e-learning, okay? And its most common form consists of two elements, uh, a server that performs the base functionality. So, usually, it's either locally, uh, local server, okay? Or uh, the bigger servers, no? And, of course, a user interface that is operated by instructors, students, and administrators, okay? So, LMS is not only for teachers and students. So, even administrators should be able to um, participate no and join okay um the management no of learning no through an LMS okay so that's basically what an LMS uh, LMS is okay now there are different kinds of LMS teachers no okay we talk about okay uh, LMS no your LMS would either be a cloud based LMS okay so basically when you say cloud based LMS okay these are LMS that um you uh, I don't know that operates online okay so most of its operations okay files, data, etc., no, are hosted online. Okay, that's why it's called cloud-based elements. Okay? While okay, uh, there are also elements um, that uh, are uh, built no, um, self-hosted. Okay? So these are more customized no, okay, um, elements okay? uh, because it's not like really online. Okay? It's online, okay, but only within the school. Okay? So it means that only the personnel, teachers, administrators within the school, okay, um, can access this uh, LMS. No? And the benefit of a self-hosted LMS okay, is that it's more secure okay, in a way okay, because you are um, I don't know, sharing information, sharing data only within your organization or your domain. Okay? And of course, you also have a desktop-based LMS. Okay? So these are LMS okay, that can only be used you know, using a desktop okay? um, or um, an LMS no, that can only be used no, um, in a mobile application or a mobile-based uh, mobile based LMS. Okay? But this is where, and if you think about it, you just know, so that's the context and that's the, where uh, Google Classroom is in. And if you think about it, teachers, okay? Google Classroom is actually a combination of these different LMS. Okay? Because Google Classroom is also cloud-based. Okay? It's actually um, hosted, no? Uh, by Google, okay, and of course it's connected to um our no no um to our Google Drive as well, okay, or Google um our cloud services by Google, okay. Uh, it's not self-hosted, okay. So um when you um um I don't know um 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 operate Google uh, Google um, Classroom, okay, or you have a Google Classroom for your school, uh it's also connected to the entire system of Google. Although, okay, it's it might not be self-hosted, but okay. Since um, Google Workspace accounts are customized and personalized to schools, okay, therefore, okay, um, using Google Classroom with your, uh, within your organization also has their own security functions. Okay, lalo na po ngayon no, sa recent updates ng ating Google Admin Console, meron na, for example, no, meron na ability ang um, ating Google um, Admin Console okay, to lock in students. Okay? So when students join your, join your classes, they could no longer leave. Okay, because sometimes you know, the, um, students would uh, leave classes, etc., and not participate in online um, classes. No? Okay? And of course, um, our Google Classroom is also desktop-based. You can access it from any browser application. But of course, we always recommend okay, Google Chrome. Okay, I explained ko na yan kaha last time no, when we talk about uh, why, is it the best, uh, why is it best to access your Google tools in your Google Chrome. Okay? But of course, compa compatibility um, aspect, no? okay? And of course, mobile application then ang Google Classroom teachers, okay? Meron tayong mobile access in Google um, to Google Classroom, no? So our students who might not have a um a, a desktop or a laptop can always, okay, um access no uh, Google Classroom via their mobile application. And let's not forget, teachers, okay? Isa sa mga interesting updates ni Google Classroom, okay? Is it's Google App, Google Classroom application in Android devices, okay? Now has the capacity for online, offline, sorry, offline modality. Okay, so our students, okay, can also access our assignments, okay? Homeworks, 
worksheets okay, or files via Google Classroom even without internet connection. Okay? Think about inclusivity teachers. No? Okay? So something that uh, Google has always been no, um, trying to prioritize no, to be able to be more inclusive, okay, of course, okay, and trying to, um, to accommodate no, as many users, as many different users no, as possible. Okay? So yan, teachers, no, ang context natin, why... Um, I don't know uh, about uh, where, where we're coming from no? as we discuss Google Classroom. Okay, so as we have um, said, no, okay, Google Classroom is a learning management system no, built within uh, the Google Workspace system. Okay, now teachers, you might be asking, no, so Sir Franco, does it mean uh, Google Classroom can only be accessed in a Google Workspace account? The answer to that is a no. Okay, because even using a personal Google account, you can also access your Google Classroom, okay? But of course, there are security issues, no? When, uh, whenever you use your uh, personal Google account, okay? Uh, it's not as secured as a Google Workspace um, uh, account, no? Or Google Workspace version of the Google Classroom, okay? At the same time, teachers, no? Um, I, 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 I use the word here, Google Workspace, because even if you're using personal Google account, Nag, nag branding na po si Google no that uh, all of its uh, tools no will reflect no the word Google Workspace regardless if you're using the premium accounts or the personal Google accounts of Google okay but again anyway it's defined as a as a learning management system now technically teachers no okay just to be honest ano okay um before the pandemic no um there are many um features no that are missing okay um, in Google Classroom, but I'm really, really proud, no, how Google Classroom changed over the course of time, okay, especially during the pandemic. Now, I think the pandemic had become a very good, no, uh, catalyst, okay, for and so, so many innovative, no, and um, um, improvements and updates to Google Classroom that I have seen throughout the years in um, in the pandemic school years. Okay, that's what I'm proud of. So we can really say now, no, and we can argue that Google Classroom is a legitimate learning management system. Okay? So let's get into these teachers now and let's explore, okay, how um, Google Classroom can be used, no? uh, what are the fundamental aspects of Google Classroom, okay, or Google Classroom and um, the different uh, features no, and functionalities of Google Classroom. Okay? So let me get into that teachers, okay? So the first one is... Um, our access point teachers, okay? Um, so when you think, uh, talk about Google Classroom, you can always um, access no, uh, Google Classroom via classroom.google.com, okay? So that's our primary access point, okay? But of course, you can always access your um, Google Classroom no, via your, uh, your mobile applications, okay? So just download no, in iOS or Android devices, okay? You can actually do that no, in order to access your Google um Classroom. And I always tell teachers, no, okay, and all users, even our students, okay, to always sync your accounts into your Google Chrome um, so that uh, or in your uh, mobile phone so that whenever you access your Google Classroom, it will automatically connect to your account. And it's not like, uh, I don't know, it will connect to another account. Okay, so you can always make sure that um, the account you're using is your official school account. Okay, that's one. Okay, so napakadaling i-access, no, and uh, the very um, uh, adapted yung design ni uh, Google Classroom. If you open it in your uh, mobile uh, phones, it's actually designed no for mobile phones. Okay, if you open it in your browser in your laptop, okay, it also opens up to the browser mode, which is also built no or designed that way. So very adaptive yung view ni Google Classroom. It's not as if na kapag nasa a mobile phone ka, you are at a disadvantage in terms of view? No. Okay? You will have the same view across different devices. Okay? Plus, again, as I mentioned, okay, this kind of um, differentiated access points no, to Google Classroom provides that sense of inclusivity to our students. Okay? So we can accommodate um, our students regardless of what device or whatever device no, they're using um, at home okay, or um, I don't know, personally. Okay? Now, Let's begin our exploration of Google Classroom, okay? So let's first have our introduction to Google Classroom and explore, no, okay, the different um, um, facets, no, of Google Classroom, okay? And, of course, our first, no, um, entry point, okay, our first thing to explore is, of course, to go to Google Classroom, okay? So let me first um, 
just open no? okay um a new tab okay so teachers when we um access our um uh, google classroom okay so you can just simply type no in um in google chrome okay classroom.google.com okay so if you type for example here in our um, omnibox no okay classroom at google.com okay that gives you access no to google classroom okay or you can always go to our usual uh, waffle icon in the upper right corner right there if you click that one you'll be able to access your um google classroom but nawala yung google classroom ko dito okay kasi hindi ko siya masyadong ginagamit ngayon okay so na ano no na na push down kay ang aking google classroom okay anyway so you can also access from there no pag again no uh, in terms of frequency but um since uh it's here no na tag ko naman siya sa aking um uh, browser okay so yan, you can also access from here at again uh, pinakamadali na rin no is uh, to also access it by a classroom that google.com okay so when you open that that opens up to a um your google classroom okay so right now uh, malinis na po ulit ang aking google classroom no well for first and foremost okay our uh, my Google Classroom po kasi hindi naman masyadong nagamit during the pandemic school years okay? kasi um gumamit kami no for um, for my school no where I'm working no we actually use another uh, learning management system okay um so for the meantime na put on hold no but okay, I have been using Google Classroom for other means okay and all my students no or all my trainees for all Google workspace training no they would know okay that um Google Classroom is what we use for training. Okay, so all my training programs, okay, the, the exclusive ones, okay. Even by the way, no, um, this um, CPD events that we're having, no, um, I'm also building um, Google Classroom for each CPD event. Okay, okay, Teacher Conrado Bigarcia, um, just to answer your question, okay, um, we will have the certificates later on after you answer the um, evaluation link, okay, or evaluation form, po. okay. Now, anyway. Let's move on, teachers, and let's start our exploration of Google Classroom by first, no, creating or joining a class. Okay, so of course, as educators, we are creating a class. But just say, for example, you are joining a Google Classroom for training, or your administrators created a Google Classroom for um, uh, I don't know, um, maybe a repository or um, like a collaborative uh, space for your department. You can you, you should also know know where to join. Okay, but basically, napakadali naman magjoin ng ating Google Classroom. Okay, so to join our uh, Google Classroom teachers, okay, we just need to go here, upper right corner, okay, plus sign, you will see create or join class. Okay, but of course, no, sa ating mobile phones, okay, that would also mean there is also a plus sign, okay, uh, when we uh, open no, our Google Classroom, no, but in a mobile phone, it's in the lower right corner, okay, not on the upper right corner, okay. So when you click this teachers, okay, you can either create or join a class, okay. So just click on this one and choose no whether you are joining or creating a class. Okay? So this one this time will be creating a class. Okay. So let's click on create class. Okay. Now to create a class, teachers, okay, we just have to put a name to it. Okay. Say for example, this is my social science okay, class. Okay. Um, grade seven. Okay. You can always put the section. Say for example, this is seven B. Okay. Or just B. Okay. Uh, that's how we name our sections. No. Um, you can also put like sometimes there are names like um, our section um, B no is uh, named after a blessed okay, a person okay, Pedro Kiba. and of course you can always put your subject area social science okay? and room just just because right now no okay we are going back on site okay? uh, you can also put the room already okay so for example what um, room you're assigned into. So even in your virtual classes, no, your um, your students would know where is your on-site meetings, okay? Um, uh, for your classes, okay? Yes, okay. I'll try to slow down. Thank you, okay? Um, sorry, teachers, na medyo na pabilis ng konte, okay? So let's uh, try to pace our, our session, okay? So again, so when we try to create a class, okay? So you have your class name, okay? Uh, your section, your um uh, subject, and of course the room. Why are this important, okay? All of these informations will actually go in as an information in your banner. Okay, so when you do this, okay, uh, when you um, do the banners, no, okay, uh, when you you put the titles, na lahat po ito lalabas or will actually uh, be be ano no, be shown okay, in your banner. So it's important that these informations are um, accurate, okay, and uh, of course, no, 
uh, very formal in a, in a way as well. Okay, so make sure that you put the proper information. Okay, although uh, teacher UA, don't you worry, no, all of uh, this session is also recorded. Okay, so you actually can um, always just replay the video anytime you want. Okay, if there anything that you would like to go back to. Okay, but I'll try to slow down as well. Thank you so much for that reminder. Okay, so now teachers, once we are ready, uh, once we are okay to um um. Uh, to create a class, okay, then we can we can simply click uh, the create button, okay. So when we click uh, the create button, okay, that will now process no and um, create your class teachers, okay. So you can do that, okay. So now my class is open, okay. Let me just um, close this, okay, first. <clears throat> Baka may may mag-juno. Baka may may sumali bigla. Uh, demo. De demo uh, this is just a demo class. No? Okay? Now, the first thing that uh, I, I, I would really recommend no, when you start your classes or when you start to build your class, no? okay? as you can see here, uh, as I've told you, no, all of the details that you put while you are setting up your class will actually appear in what we call the, call, no, the class banner. Okay? Now, the class banner is the first thing that you might want to start customizing okay because it's the first thing that your students would be, would would see okay so i really suggest uh, teachers know that when you set up your classes also start um, customizing your banners uh, you can either customize it as uh, to your subject or even customize it down to your section so each section will actually have different customization okay now just a reminder whenever you customize your banners okay your banners Will um, will already contain information like your subject, the grade level, and even your section. So those information does not need to appear in your banner anymore. Okay. So here you might want, okay, uh, I don't know, um, to when you want to customize your banner, you can simply go here and click customize. Okay. And here you can already see that uh, you have uh, option, okay, to uh, select a photo. Okay. So you have also like um. Uh, preloaded photos okay, from Google Classroom. So when you click that, you should be able to get these selections. Okay, So you can get these general selections of photos. You can also get for English and history. Okay, Say, for example, that one. Um, for example, since um, I'm a social science class, I'm going to choose this. Okay, You also have for science, arts, sports, and others. Okay, So there are um, like multitudes no, of different uh, banners you can already choose from from the ones available in our um, Google Classroom. Okay, so you can simply select that class theme and that's it. Okay, now you can, um, uh, your banner, you know, sort of like customized because you have chosen it, no? It's not the one that's been suggested by Google Classroom. Okay, you can also uh, change the class theme. The class theme basically is that the color accent in your Google Classroom. Okay, so you can see that there's a color accent, no? Right now it's blue, it's matching the color banner. If you want, for example, I can choose, uh, like, like example, pink, okay, as my color um, um, theme, okay, and you can see that my uh, accent, no, like this one, is like uh, pink, okay. That's uh, how it, how the theme, no, affects or the color theme affects your um, your Google Classroom setup, okay. Now, aside from selecting, what if, for example, Sir Franco, I want my customized uh, no, no, banner, okay, even further customized, okay. So you can actually go here, okay, and actually upload a photo right there, okay? Okay, so um, for your uh, custom banner teachers, no, okay, uh, there is a specific um, a size, no, I'll also be able to show that later on, okay? But uh, you can always do your classroom banner, okay, in Google Slides, okay, PowerPoint presentation. And you can always, of course, no, wag mahihiya, okay, do not be shy, no, to consult our every reliable graphics uh, ano no graphics um, source okay, which is canva okay uh, if you go to canva t-shirts okay, you also have different templates and uh, ano no um, different templates and of banners okay and uh, or headers no okay so you can go here and you can just search classroom google classroom header or banner no yeah that's the size if you're going to make it in another platform like Google Slides or Microsoft PowerPoint presentation, or if you know how to use um, Photoshop, okay, that's our um, size no, of our banner. 1,920 1, times 480 pixels, okay? So if I choose that, uh, teachers, no, I would be able to see, look at how many 
<laughs> banners there are. Okay, so you can uh, definitely use this, especially that our um, our accounts, no, okay, uh, the education accounts under Canva, okay, gives us premium access to the many resources in Canva. Okay, so I can say, for example, I would choose um, this, I don't know, this um, banner. Okay, okay. So I could just simply um, download that. Okay, after I have downloaded this, okay, I can uh, use this as um, as a banner you know, to my class. Okay, just waiting to uh, be downloaded. Okay, yeah. Okay, so if I go back now to my class teachers. Okay, sorry. Okay, if I go back to my class now, I will upload a photo. Okay, and I could just simply drag that you no know, and um, use that as a banner for my photo. You can have some adjustments. Okay. So you can stretch, no, okay, uh, or just focus on certain elements of your banner, okay, or header, okay. I'm used to call it in, call it banner, no, okay. Uh, but now they also, oh, sorry, hindi ko pala na save, no, okay. Um, upload the photo, okay. Sorry, teachers, for that, okay. So that's how we customize. It, no? For me, this is a very trivial thing, but for uh, that's also a very important uh, thing. I don't know. Um, for me personally, no. For others, it's a trivial thing. But for me personally, this is a such a um a good thing as a practice, no? Okay, because well, one, it customizes your the your class experience. Okay, they know exactly you know what the subject is all about. It gives them that vibe about your subject, etc. Okay, so uh, and it's not so hard to do. Okay, so you can see, you no, know, it's so easy to change our banner. Okay, yes, okay. Um, teacher uh, Joanne, okay, you can still uh, do that, no? Um, uh, you can still use the the Bitmoji, okay? Um, I, as far as I know, no, okay. Um, but I think um, I I though it's really a good one, okay, that you're loading like Bitmoji moving uh, aspect, no, okay. I don't always recommend that for um for um uh, to educators, okay. Well, one, it's good aesthetically, but take note that if it's ever it's um it's a Bitmoji um banner okay or there's a moving element in the banner okay please take note that it's also going to consume more data for our students to process that when they access your google classroom okay so uh, actually for me keeping it simple okay keeping it keeping it neat is actually a more preferred option for me okay but of course teacher um joan no you can always explore that further no yung bitmoji tsaka yung um, gif no as they call it okay because when you load gif no it's also loaded as a photo okay in Google Classroom. Okay, so that's how you start um, setting up your classroom. Okay, so now teachers, okay, so after setting up your classroom, okay, the next thing that you might want to do, okay, is to, of course, okay, um, I don't know, change settings of your classroom. Okay, please take note, okay, that there is a two level settings in our Google Classroom. Okay, because some teachers might only think that there's only one setting, no? Okay. There's actually what we call the general settings and the class settings. So there are two. Let me first show you the I don't know, the, um, the general settings of our Google Classroom. Okay. So general settings actually teachers could be found here in your uh, burger icon. Okay, yes, we call it. So we have an apple icon, uh, sorry, waffle icon, okay, and then we have a burger icon. Okay. So when you go here. You should be able to see, you know, your settings right there. Okay, so these settings, teachers, that you can find in the upper left corner of your Google Classroom, okay. And when you open it, that burger icon, okay. And when you scroll down, there's a settings. That's your general settings. Okay, that's a setting that applies to all your classes. Okay, now when you click on that settings, teachers, okay. Example, we click on this settings, okay. You will be able to see here your profile, your account settings. Okay, uh, you can't change your photo here. You have to change your photo in your Google account. Okay. Now, this is the general settings that you might want to change, no, in Google Classroom. Okay, which is the notifications. Okay. Okay, so that's teachers, no? So dito rin natin nakikita, by the way, okay, yung ating email notifications, okay? So for those people, okay, na, that uh, are so, uh, ano, no? Sometimes they, they're missing this uh, this uh, setting, no? Okay? And this is the culprit to the, 
to the setting okay, which uh, automates sending emails to us teachers. Okay, so whenever you set up a Google Classroom, okay, and you do not like turn this on, okay, or you forgot to turn this off, okay, you will receive emails after emails for any uh, changes, okay, any updates from your Google Classroom. Okay, for some teachers that's good, okay, but not always, no, because of course. Uh, we don't want our emails being flooded, okay? But, of course, there's a value to these teachers, okay? If you are that wants to always make sure that you are properly informed about what's happening in your, your, your uh, Google Classroom, then you can actually turn this on, okay? You can simply just toggle the button that now gives you, you know, um, um, notifications or Google Classroom will now start sending notifications via your email for any movement or any changes in your Google Classroom, okay? You can customize it further. Say, for example, um, I would I would only want com uh, notifications for comments on my posts, comments that mention you, or even private comments. Ako, personally, I uh, want um, I don't know, uh, notification for uh, private comments, especially private comments would usually appear in assessments, okay? So uh, whenever my students would send me uh, notifications or messages about their assessments, okay? I want to be informed about that because I won't see that, okay? I won't see that because the comments on your post, I would see that. If I go to Google Classroom, I would see who commented on my post, okay? Even, for example, comments that mention me. So I don't need notification for that. But the private comments teachers, if you don't turn that on, okay, you will only see notifications if you open the assessments, okay? So, and what if, for example, the assessment you already have checked? So you have no business opening it again. So you would see, you would not see, you know, the private message of your students. Okay? So it's a good thing, you know, to turn on private comments, okay, um, on, on works, okay? Uh, you can also turn on, like, example, late submission of student works. I would like, I would like to have that, okay? So I know who's uh, turning assessments late, okay? Although, okay, uh, technically, uh, in your classwork teachers, you no, know, you would also be informed of late submissions, okay? So you, um, uh, in the submissions of the students, okay, uh, it would like um, show it uh, if there are, if it's a late submission. It's usually marked with the, uh, I don't know, with the word late, okay? So you would not miss it, okay? It's, uh, it's bright red, okay? Resubmissions of student work, if you allow them to resubmit their works, teachers, okay? Or invitations to co-teach classes, okay? So for example, there are uh, teachers, okay, who have invited you to their class. It's actually a good practice, no? Um, so, if example, if you are in a team, um, um, like one department um, uh, and one grade level, and then you have a team like that, okay, it's a, uh, it's a good practice to invite your um, your team members to into your classes, okay. So just in case, okay, uh, you would not be able to attend to your Google Classroom, your other teachers can do that, okay. Plus, okay, what's also good about um, inviting teachers in Google Classroom when you generate uh, when you open a uh, Google meeting here in Google Classroom. Which we're going to talk about later on, okay? Uh, it also uh, makes them automatically as co-hosts okay, in your meetings, okay? And of course, uh, you can also customize, no, um, in terms of like which classes you would like to receive an update with or notifications with, okay? uh, from, pala, sorry, okay? So that's your general settings, okay, for your um for your Google Classroom, okay? Now let's go okay, to our more specific classroom settings, okay? So there is, sorry, uh, there is a Google Class settings. Okay, so this if this is the general settings you're looking at now, okay, there's also that um, classroom setting, okay, specific to each class. Okay, so what we're going to do now is to go back to our class. Okay, so this is our class teachers. Okay, just close that. Okay, now um, to to look to customize no further your class no using um uh, your your class settings. Okay, we have to go here. Upper right corner, okay, you will see here a gear icon, okay, and this gear icon is our settings, okay. So when you click on this one, okay, you will it will open up to everything about your class, okay, including the class details. This is the one that we um um uh, set up earlier, okay. You can always change it, okay, um whenever you want it, okay. You can further customize it. So for example, you want to include class description it's not included in the um uh, during the time that we were creating it okay uh, and of course other things no that you would like to um to, to customize okay and then here you have your general settings okay so general settings things to 
take note of in our general settings. You will find here your invite code. Okay? Invite codes, teachers, is the way to invite students. Okay? So normally, uh, we send uh, a code note to our students okay? to be able to join our classes. Okay? So there are three different ways actually to join um, uh, your classes. Okay? So your students can either receive you know, uh, from you the class code. Okay? So you have to give them a class code. Okay? Second, um, your students can receive an invitation. Okay? And third, uh, teachers, now I'll be showing that later on, you can also directly invite students via email. Okay, we can also do that later on. So there are three, three ways no, to access or to, um, uh, for your students to be able to join your classes. Of course, teachers, uh, based on the recent update, no, although it's only available in the Education Plus accounts, okay, um, now uh, Google Classroom already explored no, what we call the roster syncing. Uh, we're in Google Admin Console, okay, can already preload students into classes, create classes and preload students. Okay, um, so this is one uh, really big, I don't know, um, um, improvement in Google Classroom. But unfortunately, teachers, it's not available for all of, uh, I don't know, for all the accounts. Okay, and right now, many of us uh, are are using okay, Fundamentals account, and it's not available in the Fundamentals account, only in the Education Plus account. Okay, now you can also I don't know, uh, turn on, turn off okay, the, the in the, the class codes. Okay, so you can uh, when you do that, no, it will generate a class code. Okay, right there, and even what we call the invite link. Okay, so what's the difference between using the code and using the link? No. Uh, when you're inviting your students, okay? The basic difference that teaches that it makes it a lot easier, okay, for students to join your classes, okay? Because if you are just sharing the class code, okay, it means that the students, okay, will still have to go to Google Classroom and then jo uh, click join class and then encode the code, okay? That's how, that's the step, no, okay? When you're sharing only the code, okay? But, okay, a quicker way for your students to be able to join your classes is to share this, invite link what it does teachers know if you share that invite link this one okay when you share this invite link okay uh, to your students when they click that okay it automatically brings them okay um to your class okay and it will prompt them to join your class right away okay so much easier no? okay so it's it's one or two steps um quicker than uh using the class code okay but again still up to your teachers no? okay which um joining method okay or invitation method okay you would like to utilize for your classes okay and you can always also know um when you are um sorry when you are um teaching or projecting this to your students you can always display the code okay so it becomes larger because sometimes though uh students can act can't actually see it okay so while for example doing a class discussion okay um you can simply show this so that they can join your google classroom uh, right now during your sync sessions, okay, or on sorry, or face to face sessions uh, in your classes, okay. So you can um, enlarge that, okay. Aside from that, teachers, this is also one of the few as uh, I don't know. Um, um, first things, okay, I usually change for my classes, okay. This one, okay, you can see it here. This uh, stream, I will show that to you later on. We will explore that, okay. But the stream is basically where all the posts, okay. In your classes will end up okay so uh, by default okay it says here that students okay, can post and comment in your stream this is one thing that you don't want to uh, you, you don't want for your classes okay because it will create no unless this is a a faculty google classroom where everyone no, can post because uh, of course no, we're all adults okay but if it, this is a class okay i would suggest no you don't do that okay uh, because you would end up having a class with so much clutter, uh, with your students posting no random things, okay, or even uh, replying to your post no in a different post, etc. So it's it's a very cluttered, disorganized class. Okay, so what I usually do here is uh, to change that right away before I invite students to my class. I would change that into students can only comment, okay, in um I don't know um uh in the classroom or if you want. Um, a bit more stricter um, um, I don't know, access, okay? Only teachers can post and comment. But I don't want that. I still want my students to be able to uh, engage in my, uh, in, in my Google Classroom, no? okay? So 
that is the sweet spot okay so allowing them or giving them something okay but not everything okay? so i can choose students can only comment okay so what it does it's they only can comment no and they cannot post okay so whenever you post something that's the only time they can like send message or okay, uh, um, uh, post something into the comment section okay you can always also uh, choose no um the the i don't know the um the postings or the class works in your um in your stream okay if you want your stream to show uh, attachments and details okay uh, that's actually a good uh, thing no? so that your students will be able to see if there are attachments okay or other details about the assignment without even looking at the classwork okay so they can already see it in the class stream okay so that's actually a good suggestion okay uh, you can also um show no um Deleted items, okay, but that only um, it's ab um, available no, to teachers in your class. Okay? So, if you have co-teachers okay, in your class, okay, that's the only time uh, those deleted items will actually show up. Okay? And of course, ito na teachers. Okay? You can also have okay, what we call a guardian summaries. Okay? So, this one is only ab available to all Google Workspace uh, users. Okay? So, fundamental standards. Okay? And uh, Education Plus. So, all of you have access to what we call Guardian Summaries. Okay? Now, what is what are Guardian Summaries? Okay? So, what does it do? Okay? So, basically, teachers, Guardian Summaries okay, is a way to inform the parents okay, about what's happening in your class. Okay? Okay. Um, you can... Um, you can... Um, what they call this? Um, you can give your parents okay, a summary of um, of the events no, for the week. Okay, so that they are constantly being informed, okay, without you doing anything, teachers, no, okay. This is an automated process. Okay, so Google Classroom will curate no uh, all your deadlines, all the activities that's due for this week, and they it will send it to parents. Okay. And again, the the good news is that it's available to all accounts no of Google Workspace. Okay. So when you go here and you turn this on, okay, it's already by default and naka turn on. Okay, let me just um, show you an example of a garden summary, okay, so that you would know, uh, you would see, you know, an ex um, how it looks like, okay. So this is an example of a garden summary. Okay, yeah. okay so what uh, Google Classroom does, it uh, provides, you no, know, uh, parents with a weekly summary for, um, for their sons, okay, for their daughters, okay, or for their children in the Google Classroom, okay. So again. The parents are also uh, informed, and this is one good aspect of Google Classroom because, as we've said, no, a, a good learning management system, system, no, involves the different stakeholders in education: students, teachers, even parents and educators. Okay, so this is a really nice aspect of Google Classroom. Okay, later on, okay, I will um, teach you, okay, and I will um, uh, we will cover, no, okay, how to add guardians into our google classroom okay and don't worry okay when you add guardians into our um, classroom no, okay they will not see everything okay so again they're just there so that google classroom can send them the guardian summaries okay and okay and of course okay um we can also generate here the meeting link okay uh we'll talk about later on the um, uh, integration of google meet uh into google classroom okay but this one is the last thing I'd like to talk about in our settings because this is a very helpful tool for our students. But before we do that, okay, I'd like to first okay, address the question of teacher uh, feds, no? Okay? Yan. Yan. Sir Franco, is it possible po ba na ang old classroom ko ay magamit ko sa susunod na, na school year na hindi na po na-access ng former students ko ang classroom? Okay? Now, the best um, practice for this na teacher um, Pedelina, no? Okay? There are two ways, okay? The harder way okay, is that you'll have to remove uh, your students no, manually uh, from your classroom. Okay? That's the only time you can remove them, okay? All together, you know, uh, from and not be able to access your classroom. The second, much easier option, okay, for this teacher, Pedelina, is to make a copy of your classroom, okay? Or your class, okay? So when you go here, uh, teacher Pedelina, okay, uh, sa ating Google Classroom, okay, uh, you can actually go here sa settings natin, okay? And, okay, uh, make a copy right there. Okay, so you can actually copy an entire class, okay? And what's good about copying an entire class, teacher feds, okay? Siyempre, no? Close po kasi kami talaga ni teacher feds. Hi, teacher feds, okay? Uh, when you do make a copy of, um, 
of ano no of an entire class it also copies everything all your school works all the attachments all your um, stream posts etc okay but you'll have to repost them so uh, what happens is that it's it's part as scheduled um postings okay? and you'll have to activate that by posting it again okay so yan okay so yes teacher feds no? you can definitely use your old classes for new ano okay and let's just address also the question for teacher Rose and Rosanes, okay? And just go out there and go back to um, um, our class, okay? Okay. And the question from teacher Rose is, can teachers control what's included in the garden summary scheme? Okay? Now, uh, teacher Rose, okay, um, if there are no deadlines, okay, um, so usually, you know, what happens is that um, it curates you know, whatever is posted, okay? Uh, in your um, in your stream or in your classwork, okay, that's the only thing that will be posted. So if you want, you can actually unpublish, okay, or remove a particular post, okay, or a particular classwork, so it does not get into um, I don't know, uh, into the garden summaries, okay. Okay, yeah, teacher Marie, uh, uh, Maria Julie, no, okay. Again, the, they don't see posts, okay. That's one, okay. So they don't see post teacher um, um, uh, teacher Julie. Okay? What they see are summary of deadlines okay? and summary of what their sons and daughters miss in your classes. Okay? So they don't see post. They won't see, for example, the stream. Okay? Mamaya pupunta natin yung stream. They won't see that. Okay? So they won't see the classroom at all, by the way. Okay? So unlike the students who can explore the classroom, okay, uh, parents cannot go to Okay, unless, for example, no, they hack the student's account, okay, and actually access it from there. Okay, so we're safe, teacher Julie. They would not be able to see it. What they actually just see is a list of tasks uh, to be submitted and a list of tasks that their sons or daughters miss or did not submit. Okay, so that that's a good thing, no, because uh, it would um, it would make sure that our stu our parents are properly informed, para walang sisihan sa dulo. Okay, na. Why, we, why did you not inform me about my son's or my daughter's performance or bakit hindi mo kami tinulungan, okay? Or something like that, okay? We know that. And of course, uh, while we can do that, no? It's also like a very big task, constantly uh, sending reports to parents, okay? But now, you have an automated process to this one, okay? Yes, Teacher Roseanne, okay? Okay, uh, normally, Teacher May, dapat hindi, okay? Hindi po ito pinapadala, no? Yung mga scores, okay? Um, um, this one is um, contained in our uh, grading system, okay? What they're going to see would be the misassessments. Okay? Okay. So, for for example, okay, um, for the grades, this for example, teacher May, you'll have to send that report in another means. Okay, of course, teacher May, where I already teach you as well. No, I also have an automated process for that. Okay, so teachers will also not have a hard time sending progress reports to students. Okay, using um, I don't know, an automated process. You can also check that out. Okay. In our YouTube channel, okay, it's um, uh, called no um, uh, automated um, report card and progress report sending. Okay, so you can check that out no uh, for that one. Okay, so that one you can have a more detailed progress report for parents. Okay, wherein you can like detail the scores, okay, um, comments, feedback, etc. Okay, because this garden summary does not have our feedback. Okay, it's basically the purpose of the garden summary is to allow parents to intervene. Okay. Uh, before uh, their sons and daughters okay, or their children okay, fail your class. Okay? Yeah. okay? So moving on, teachers, uh, the last setting that you might want to, um, to take care of okay, is what we call the grading um, settings. Okay? Now, Google Classroom, if you are fully committed, can actually help you compute grades. Okay? So if you put all your assessments here, um, all your uh, no, no, graded assessments here, okay, Google Classroom can easily curate those scores for you and help you grade your um your no no your um, um help you uh, arrive at a grade okay but this one teachers no okay um uh, this only makes use of uh, number grades okay so for those who are using okay uh, letter grades okay yeah say for example i don't know teacher may i know that you are using teacher like us no uh, letter grades din tayo okay um this is not applicable to that no this it only uh, no, no, it's applicable to uh, number grades okay now so what it, but of course no if you have like a transmutation or okay, a reference key of a certain like levels per grade level up uh, per um, letter grades to to number grades then it could also work okay now 
um, there are three different uh, options now when you um, um, change the settings for the grading. Okay? You have here total points and weighted by category. Okay? Uh, of course, you can also do no, no overall grade. So what basically will Google Classroom will do? List down all the scores. That's it. No computations at the end of it. Okay? But if you want Google Classroom to help you compute, you can choose, for example, okay, total points computation. Okay? So what does two total points computation do? It's basically adding all the scores together. Okay? So for example, when you click that, okay, you will simply have uh, what, what Google Classroom will do. Now, for example, if you have a quiz of uh, 20, 20, 20, and 20, okay? so it will simply add up all those scores and give them the, 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 no, no, the, the sum okay? of all of those scores okay? at the end of the quarter or at the end of the term. Okay? Although, I know for a fact that many of our teachers okay, also make use of what we call weighted by category. Okay? We're in we don't use, uh, we use scores then, yes, okay? But they are, uh, I don't know, um, I don't know, um, uh, average in a way, okay? Into a certain category. Say, for example, okay? All quizzes, okay? Regardless if it's 100 or 200 points, okay? Will be just 20% of the overall grade, okay? Or, for example, you have, um, like, performance tasks, okay? Uh, worth 40 points, okay? And, of course, you have a, um, a periodical test, for example, for 40 percent as well okay so that's what uh, that's how weighted by category will work no okay so when you do weighted by category okay do not forget that you have to add the categories wherein google classroom will put the, per the particular assessments okay so dito pa lang sa settings in our settings you'll have to set up your grade categories right here okay so as i mentioned for example we have um say for example um quizzes okay so our quizzes okay, will be worth um, 20%. Okay, so all our quizzes. Okay? Then we have performance tasks. Okay? So regardless, if you have one, two, three performance tasks, okay, uh, all of the scores will be computed over 40%. Okay? So it will be added up okay? and um, Google Classroom will compute it over 40%. Okay? And of course, maybe you have a periodical test okay? or a, uh, I don't know, a term assessment. Okay? That will be also 40%. Okay. So you can also do that. Now, take notice now that uh, your grades are properly allocated into 100%. Okay? So, walang so sobra. Okay? So, pag naubos mo na yun, hindi ka na pwedeng mag-add ng new category. You'll have to reduce your percentage first. Okay? So, la mamaya makikita natin yan okay? once it's um, uh, we're starting to grade assessments. Okay? So when you click that, once you're done, okay, you can also, by the way, no, um, opt to show overall grade or not to show it. Okay, so you, it's up to you, no, it's uh, your choice, okay. But don't forget, no, once you have set up all the settings, okay, um, let's click save. Okay. Now your classroom has been set up, okay, has been um, uh, prepared already. Settings are on its way. So always I recommend you know, that before you even launch a Google Classroom, all of these things are properly taken care of, okay? So that you don't like encounter unnecessary problems along the way, okay? This will make your experience in using Google Classroom much more smoother and better, okay? That's uh, how I define it, okay? Okay, so that's for our classroom settings, okay? Our next one, okay, which is um, our, uh, I don't know, um, as mentioned earlier, okay? We have now the classroom stream. Okay, so basically, teachers, okay, our classroom stream is where all the posts uh, would actually go in. Okay, okay so we're actually go in. Okay, so this is where posts, okay, um, classworks will actually also show. Okay, and um, here we have, okay, this is where our stream is. Okay, so this is where we can make announcements. Okay. And of course, all um, classworks, okay, all um, posts that you make will also end up here. Just think of it as a Facebook feed. Okay? So your Facebook feed will also um, uh, go, I don't know, um, be shown here. Okay? But uh, the most important aspect and most important um, purpose of stream is actually to make announcements. Okay? Make quick announcements, okay? uh, information about your class, okay? etc. Okay? So, to make an announcement, uh, teachers, okay, you just have to click on this box right here. Announce something in your class, okay, that will 
um, prompt no um, uh, to create an announcement. So say for example, I can create a welcome note. Okay? So welcome to our class. Okay. Now what's good about ngayon, teachers no sa ating Google Classroom okay? uh, is that it now also allows you to show or when you attach images. Okay? So you can attach by the way folders okay? here. So marami kang pwedeng uh, i-attach no uh, folders okay? uh, um, files okay? uh, links okay? you can also attach videos from YouTube okay? and take note that you can also customize no so meron din tayong rich text editor sa ating announcement um, uh, ano, no? um, for our announcements okay? you can make it like bold italic underline okay? um, or um, um, you can entirely move all text formatting okay but here's what's cool about Google Classroom now no okay is that when you attach uh, photos, say for example, if I attach a photo here, okay, okay, up, we'll just uh, upload no from um, from my computer, okay, that one, okay. So for example, this one, okay, uh, before files are just attached no below, okay, but now when actually um a post it, notice that you can actually use uh image no as a display image, okay, so you can actually already see it into the stream okay now if you attach for example multiple photos okay you can have just one of the photos as a display image okay uh to ano, no, to like um fill in okay uh in your stream okay so when you post that okay that photo will actually also appear okay in your post like that okay notice that it does not happen before okay sa mga google classroom users po natin no? hindi po lumalabas yung photo okay whenever we post a photo okay it's just uh ano no um um uh, Post, ano, no, attachment lang talaga dun sa baba. Okay? But now, it's now also, there's a, it appears as a display image. Okay? So that features our, ano, no, our stream. Okay? Ngayon, this is also, by the way, no, another good thing about our stream teachers is that you also have the reposting capabilities. Okay? Ano po ibig sabihin ng reposting? No? Okay? So dito, meron kang uh, button, no, yung reuse post. Okay? And when you click this one, you can actually reuse posts from other classes, okay, or your own class. Okay, so for example, meron kang class na itong class na to, okay, uh, you can um, get no posts from there. Okay, so say for example, I'm going to get a post from a grade 10 ilang ilang right there, okay. So you can choose that, okay, and uh, you can reuse it right there. Okay, you can click on reuse, and that should prompt no uh, reusing the post. So hindi rin siya nakakapagod, okay. Um, kapag nagpo-post po tayo or um, meron tayong mga posts na before na ginamit okay? or mga announcement na ginamit sa mga classes natin, we can always use them over and over again. Of course, there might be changes in in, in attachment, etc. But overall, you should be able to change that. Okay? Another thing okay, na pwede po nating explore okay, with our stream is yung tinatawag nating uh, ano no moving to top okay wala po tayong uh, that's one thing that i have to ano no to admit in our uh, for our teachers no okay this is an update that i have been actually waiting for but uh, it doesn't really come have not come yet okay because there are some teachers who are requesting about pinning a post okay uh, for them to be able to pin a post okay yes um we can't pin a post okay in google classroom but okay we can always rearrange it okay so you can always actually move Example, if you have a, an important announcement okay, uh, in your class, you can always um, click here sa ating fishbowl icon. And when you do that, okay, you will be able to click move the top. Okay? Of course, teachers, I can't click this now. No? I can't click move the top because there's nothing to move uh, on top on uh, right now. Okay? So, uh, but if there are other posts okay, in, your, um, in your class no? and you, have, you want something, um, a, a post to bring it up on top, okay? you can always move to top. Okay, that's our, um, ano teachers, no? that's our uh, way to organize our, our um, um, stream. Okay, so this is also the place, no, where you want to protect it. Okay, because you don't want, kaya nga, kanina, sabi ko, no, okay, uh, if you can, okay, um, try to, um, try to limit your students' ability to post, okay? Uh, they can only comment so that your stream remains to be very organized, okay? And uh, are free from clutter, okay? So that's our Google Classroom stream, okay? Okay, sorry po. No, no problem po. Don't worry, okay? Kung may mga sumali man, Teacher Joan, okay lang. Sample, sample ano lang naman to. Sample class lang naman to, okay? Ayan, okay? Now, uh, teachers, no, okay? Let's now uh, explore no another no um 
uh, which is the um, um, of course no where we find the people. So where we do we find like the members of the class? Where do we find members of our um I don't know um uh, of our classroom? Okay, so we can always go here. Okay, sa ating Google Classroom people. Okay, which is on the um, tab right on top of your Google Classroom. Okay, so now besides stream classwork, you have people. Okay. So in people, you can add, there are two segments, no, okay, that um uh, that's uh, being shown here, okay? And the first one, okay, is of course the teachers. So if you want to add teachers, okay, you can easily add them here. Say so for example, if I want to invite um someone, okay? Say so for example, let's invite um my um okay, which is just invite Sir Alwin, no? okay? For example, let's invite uh, Sir Alwin. Okay, uh, ayan. Okay, so na invite siya, no? Okay, pero um, remove natin baka pala makat matanggap ng uh, notification Sir Alwin. Okay, so you can also invite or remove okay, uh, teachers in your classes. Okay, and of course you can also invite no uh, your students as well here. Ito po yung sabi ko sa inyo kanina no na you can actually invite no um um sorry you can invite um students okay, via email. Okay, so again tatlo yung ways natin to invite students okay. We can invite students okay, uh, via class code, okay, via a meeting code, uh, sorry, meeting code, um, um, your invitation code, okay, and this is the last uh, option to invite your students, okay, via email, okay. Now, I always tell to teachers, okay, if you are using Google Workspace accounts, okay, in using the code and using the invite link, no, uh, for in inviting students, it's just perfect, okay, no problem with that because. Um, Google Workspace accounts are locked into your accounts. Ibig sabihin, even if um, some students okay, try to join in and they're not using uh, an account no, outside of your domain, okay? if they're using account outside of the, your domain, they will not be able to join. Okay. Um, now, this becomes a concern if you're using personal Google account to set up your Google Classroom. Okay? Using the code and invitation link is not actually advisable. Okay, because students, random students, okay, can just easily join your class. Okay, so I recommend if you're using personal Google account, not the premium or the Google Workspace account, invite your students using uh, email. Okay, so that you can be sure that only those okay, who are supposed to be in your class get, ends up in your class. Okay, now. I will try to join teachers, no, okay, uh, from my other account, okay. Let me just um go here, okay, and I will try to join using um, okay, sorry, okay. using my uh, other account, okay, um, uh, in my mobile phone, okay. So again, no, uh, students can use either their mobile phones, okay, and uh, their uh, no, okay, just uh, join that. And once a student joins, okay, um, that student's name no, should appear in our list of students. Let me just refresh this, okay, so that it would reflect the name of my student who just joined my class, okay. And that student actually joined using a, um, I don't know, um, using um, um, class code, okay. So now, once your students are here, okay, uh, this is the one. Teacher, ano, no? um, teacher feds kanina. Di, pwede mo dito tanggalin yung mga uh, former students mo. Pero again, I don't recommend that very long course of um, using your courses again. Making a copy will actually do it. Okay? So, here teachers, okay, there are different actions you can do okay, with your students. Okay? So, when you click a particular student or multiple students at the same time, you can actually click here sa drop-down menu natin. Okay? And you have the option to email them to remove them or to mute them. Okay, so uh, email, of course, if you want to communicate with them uh, using your Google Classroom, hindi mo na kailangan pumunta ng, um, ng Gmail at baka magkamali ka pa ng type ng email address nila, hindi pa masend, okay? So you can actually email it, uh, them here right away, okay? You can also select multiple students, okay? And email them all together, okay? So you can do that, okay? Or just in case, for example, you do a sweeping and you found a student who's not supposed to be in your class, you can always remove them. Okay, and this one is uh, what I also like. No, okay, if there are students who are being disruptive, okay, or distractive, no, sa class nyo, okay, you can always mute them. Okay, muting a student prevents them from posting or commenting. Okay, so if you have students who are like um would like to comment random, okay, or um uh, just like randomly posting things on your uh, on your um 
uh, stream, you can always mute them. Okay? But don't worry, don't worry, even if they're muted, they can always submit requirements just like the others. Okay? So they just basically remove the ability to comment or to post. Okay? And also here, teachers, is where we add guardians. Okay? So once you have added the students, okay, you can now also add your guardians. Okay? The only requirement for your guardians, no, okay, or for you to be able to add your guardians, teachers, okay, is for you to know their email addresses. Okay, so you make sure that you also have a database okay, of um of um students uh, email ad um, parents email addresses. Okay, so you can get it from your students. Okay, so you can also invite the guardians, and it's where in that email that you will add. Okay, where um um Google Classroom okay, will um oh, sorry okay. Hindi ko lang mapakita teachers no kasi lumalabas yung email ng um mga co-workers co ko. Okay, data privacy concern. Uh, when you click that, it will open up, it will pop up and it will show you um um or you can add no uh, email addresses of the parents, okay? Now teachers, this also um uh, allows you no, to add from Google Sheets. Okay? So okay, magalala na kailangan niyo mag-type manually. So for example, you collected the email addresses via Google Form from your students, okay? So you can simply just like make a survey via Google Form, collect the email addresses of the parents, okay? and then con uh, extract the data into Google Sheets. Okay? And all of those emails, no, when you copy it, you can actually paste it in the field no, for emails. Okay? So, wala rin problema in adding your parents' emails as well. Okay? So, once they're invited teachers, they will also appear here as the guardian. Okay? So, may makikita na po kayo dito, lalabas po dun sa right side ng uh, pangalan ng student, okay, would be the guardian uh, details. Okay? So, whoever is that uh, guardian. Okay? So, that's how we um, add uh, guardians as well. Students, okay? And teachers into uh, our um, people tab. Okay? So, that's for people tab teachers. Okay? Ngayon, teachers, this one, I would not be able to explore fully because wala pa naman tayong submissions, no? Okay? Uh, dito sa ating um, grades. But basically, it's where all of your um, assessments now will end up. Okay, so all the scores, okay, the title of your assessments, okay, will actually be curated here. Okay, so you will see it. And of course, Mamaya, I'll also teach you, no, okay, on how to um, extract okay, um, your assessments, okay, uh, yung grades of your assessments. You can actually extract a full Google Sheets, no, for that. So you can put it in your grading sheets or in your files. Okay, so you can easily do that as well. Okay. But for the meantime, let me first proceed um, uh, on to our last tab, which is on the classwork. Okay? Because this is the most important. Okay? This is where we do our assignments. Okay? This is where we do our classworks. Okay? Our, um, um, we give um, activities to our students. Okay? So our classwork is where we design things okay, for our students. Okay? So here, when you type, when you click on um, Google uh, our classwork, okay? Uh, before we start um, classwork, okay, you the first thing that you would actually see here okay, is um, that you have an integrated tool here in Google Classroom, which is Google Calendar and Google Drive. Okay? Now, teachers, okay, what happens is that whenever we open a Google Classroom, okay, that Google Classroom will automatically generate a Google Calendar. Okay? So, meron po yung kamatch na Google Calendar. No? So, when you open this, okay, that actually pops up no, uh, into your calendar, google.com, okay, uh, where all your, uh, ano, no, um, maybe assessments, okay, uh, are actually shown. So, pag meron kang mga assessments, due dates, okay, that will also appear here. That's a shared calendar to all of you, you as a teacher and all of your students, okay? So, that's where all your assessments, your due dates, no, will actually end up or, Example, if you also add tasks, etc. But even if teachers, no, kahit po hindi kayo, kahit hindi um, mga due dates nyo sa Google Classroom, say for example, meron kayo mga gustong reminders na ibigay sa inyong mga estudyante, pwede nyo rin pong i-post dito yun. Okay? So you can actually also add uh, other events, okay, inside your calendar and your students should be able to see it. Say for example, okay, uh, mag-type ka dito for example ng... Um, um, Synchronous session, okay, for our, for your students, okay. Your students should be able to see it, okay. Okay, something like that, okay. And then click mo lang, okay, and you're done, okay. And that uh, reminder will also reflect 
on the rima the calendar of your students. Okay, so that's automatic. So you can fully utilize that integrated tool in your class as well. Of course, meron din tayong class drive folder, but this is a uh, ano no? This is um a ano no? Um um a misconception, okay? Or uh, sometimes a confusion for our teachers, okay? Your class drive folder teachers is not a shared folder across your users or your class, okay? So it means that your this 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 so-called class drive folder, okay, is not um, seen by everyone, okay? So you have your own class drive. When you access the class drive folder, the only things that you're going to see here, okay, for a while. The only things that you're going to see here would be um, your, um, I don't know, um, okay, in your Google Classroom, okay? Uh, other than that, you won't, um, uh, you won't see. You won't see um, student files, okay? So these are like a class drive folder, okay, that when students click, um, they would be able to access any file that they have uploaded in the Google Drive folder. Okay, so these are sort of like still a personalized uh, folder pa rin for each one of you in the classroom. So it's not like a consolidated that all of the files, your file, their files would end up in one space. No, okay. So this still uh, keeps it no um, secured key and uh, private no for all users in your Google Classroom. Okay, so that's another uh, integrated tool no um, for our um, Google Classroom. Okay, so let's now begin uh, creating our um, uh, classworks. Okay, so here you have a create button that allows you to create certain classworks. Okay, so when you click here, you have different options. Okay, so you have assignment, quiz assignment, question, material. You can also reuse post and of course topic. Okay, now before you even start, okay, launching your Google Classroom, the first thing that I always recommend teachers, Kim, okay, is to start with topics. Okay. Because topics is a way to organize your classworks into meaningful, organized way. Okay? Unlike, for example, pag wala kang topics, teachers, no? Okay? Uh, your, your, your posts, your um, classworks, okay? Could just simply end up no, in a random. Okay? And in, not in a very organized manner. Okay? So what I usually do here is to create topics first. Okay? So what I do uh, is to click topic. And then, um, example, I'm going to create the first topic I'm going to create would be assessments okay so it means that all assessments okay will end up in this topic okay? i'm going to show you how it works later on okay i would also usually add for example um a topic which is on materials okay so all materials posts if for example i'm going to uh, post a material i would put it in the materials post okay and of course i would also have like lessons okay so for example if i have lessons okay um, like lesson one, lesson two, etc. I can put it here, okay? Um, in my, uh, no, no, um, in my materials, okay? But we'll let let's not anymore create that, no, okay? Let's just use these two, okay? Materials and assessments, okay? So that's how topics are created, okay? So so far, um, this will not yet appear, no, um, into your students' view, okay? Until you post something into it, okay? So let's begin posting, okay? So say, for example, I have my first thing that I'd like to do, okay, is uh, assignment, okay? So assignment, basically, teachers, okay, if there are submissions. So if you want something to be submitted, then you use assignment, okay? So for example, you want to sub have them submit a, uh, a, um, a paper or a video or whatever that is, okay? Then you have to create assignment, okay? So when you click this, teachers, okay, that will now um, um, prompt, no, okay, you to you, uh, see this, okay? So this is where we click assignments. Dito may reminder, no, when you open um, assignments, please take note that you can now uh, schedule across multiple class. That's also a recent update. Hindi po natin nagagawa yan before, no, okay? Teachers, baka lang na-confuse tayo before, no? Nakakapag-post po tayo across different class, but that's a post, okay? Pero scheduling, uh, you can actually now do that uh, in Google Classroom, Okay. I will go to that later on, okay? Uh, I will um, answer, address the questions of Teacher Edna and Teacher Jesus later on, okay? Okay, so now let's start creating an assignment. Of course, assignment will always uh, start now with a, um, a, no, no, a title, okay? So, for example, this is, um, we have a worksheet recently, you know, 
on Google Earth. We ask our students to create a worksheet on Google Earth called the Google Earth Planner. Okay, so you can put instructions here. Okay, um, you also have your rich text editor dito. Okay, now okay, um, for those uh, who are um, uh, I don't know want to explore other ways okay of um leaving. Uh, instructions to your students, you can also record yourself, okay? So there is an extension, okay? A Chrome extension called Moat extension, okay? Uh, I know that many teachers are already familiar with this, okay? You can also leave uh, an audio comment. Once you, um, I don't know, um, added, okay? Uh, Moat extension to your Chrome, okay? You will see this extra button here. Click to record, okay? So you can actually record your instruction right here for a while. Okay, allow ko lang yung uh, microphone, okay, to allow mode extension, okay. So, yan, click ko yung mode. So, I will now be able to record, okay. Okay, dali lang, hindi siya nakapag-record kasi hindi naka-sign in, ano. Okay, pero anyway, um, let's not any more sign, it will, it will waste our time. But teachers, uh, please do explore, no, yan. Okay, can record an instruction. For example, the instruction is very long, then you might want to do an audio instruction, okay? And here, whenever whenever we do assignments, no, okay, we have options, no, so many options to attach materials, okay? So you can either attach a material from your Google Drive, okay? YouTube, no, if you want to, like, put a video, okay? This is very useful, for example, if you have an assignment and students will have to view, um, uh, I don't know, um, um, a video first before um, answering, okay? Or you can even create, okay? Or even upload, okay? Something like that. And of course, okay, um, you can also do no um, uh, links no, if you want. For example, link to a website, etc. You can also attach it here, okay? So, but in this case, no, I'll just be going and getting a worksheet from my Google Drive, okay? Uh, to be able to show this, okay? So I'm going to search for it, Google. Okay, okay for a while. Okay, let me search for that uh, uh, worksheet, for example, okay? Okay, yeah. So once you have selected the Google Docs, no, okay? Uh, or the file that you'd like to attach, no, uh, from your Google Drive, okay, whatever that is, okay? You can easily insert that, okay? Dalawa na pala na, ano, okay? Now, once you, sorry. Okay, let me just do that again. For a while, teachers, no? Okay. I think nagiglitch ang aking. Um, let's try that. Okay. Let's get into that. Okay. So right there. Insert natin. Okay. So now, teachers, okay? You have now an attached file into your... Um, uh, I don't know, uh, works, okay? What's also good this is that if your <clears throat> uh, attached file no, is a Google Docs file, uh, it's a Google file, okay? So Google Slides, Google Sheets, or Google Docs teachers, okay? Students can actually, um, I know you have an option, okay? To create a copy for each student. So perfect for creating templates, okay? Or sharing templates. You don't need to share like a template and ask them to make a copy, okay? So Google Classroom will, can also do that for you, no? Make a copy for each student, okay? So you can simply go here, click on the drop-down menu, and make a copy for each student right there. So what's going to happen now is that once you launch that assignment, it will now... Um, it will now ano, no, um, create no multiple um, one copy for, for each student with their names already. Okay, so you have also proper filing. Okay, so now once you're done with all your instructions, with all your attachments, okay, before you even assign that assignment, okay, please take note also that you have also different settings here. Okay, so you can, um, as I mentioned, no, you can set no. Um, Assignments across different classes. If example, I also want to send it to grade 10 result. Okay, so two classes, okay. So simultaneous no sending of assignments or assigning assignments, okay. You can also, if it's just assigned to one class teachers, you can also assign it to specific students, okay. So this is where um, differentiation, personalization of learning could actually come in. Say, for example, you have students who are struggling in your classes, okay, and you want to send them materials, okay. So you can do so, send the materials, only to specific students. So they can um, receive no um, an assistance, okay? 
and be able to catch up with your class. Okay? And here is where the category we set up earlier would actually come in. Right? Uh, earlier, we set up grade categories. So you would now be able to choose where this um, um, uh, assignment no? or this assessment maybe okay, would actually end up in. If it's not grade, no category. Okay? Uh, you can also go here and choose not ungraded. You can change the points or if it's not graded, then you can do that. Say, for example, this is graded. Okay? So I would choose it should end up in performance task. So what's going to happen, teachers, is that Google Classroom will group this assessment into the performance task and at the end of it all, it will compute it over 40%. The one that we set up kanina. Kasi we said that performance task is weighted as 40%. Okay? You can also assign due dates. Okay? So when you assign due dates, teachers, okay, um, you can choose date when to collect it. Say, for example, it's due on Friday. Okay? Sorry, that's that Friday. Okay? Uh, option yung time. It's really up to you. Ako, personally, I always um, set my deadlines no, up to 4 p.m. usually. Okay? That allows me to, ano, no, uh, to not receive like the um, submissions beyond 4 p.m. Okay? I also teach my students okay, um, some respect over time. Okay? And of course, pwedeng pwede ka na rin dito um, mag-set ano, no, mag up nung, ta nung topic mo. This is what I talked you uh, talk to you about earlier, okay? That once you have set up your topics, you can easily group them already in those topics, okay? So when you click that, you can uh, kung wala pang topics, you can create it from here. But since nakapag create na tayo ng topics, we can already assign it there, okay? So for example, assessments, okay? I will show it to you later on how it looks like, okay? Ngayon, okay? Once it's done, okay? So pwede tayong mag assign. But here's the thing teachers, okay? Please also explore the creating or creating rubrics, okay? And checking for plagiarism, okay? So the first one, you can also create a rubric here, okay? Um, what, um, how you're going to grade the assessment, okay? Or you can even reuse, no? Kung meron ka nang na-develop na rubric from your previous Google Classroom, okay? You can also use them, okay? Or kung ang Google ang um, uh, inyong... Uh, um, uh, rubrics before are in Google Sheet. You can actually import it from Google Sheet. Okay, so either way, no? Okay, so for this one, for example, um, mag-create tayo, okay? So let's create a rubric for this, okay? So I'm going to also show you now, no, how to create a rubric, okay? So of course, teachers, creating a rubric kung first time pa lang, no, will take time, okay? So medyo may konting investment in terms of time, okay? But let me just uh, give you a quick run through no ng uh, ano natin ng pag-create ng rubric sa loob ng Google Classroom, okay? Now, when you want to create a rubric in Google Classroom, okay? The first thing that you have to do is to determine your criterion, okay? Uh, Sir Franco, ano po yung criterion na yan, okay? If I for example, let me just show you a normal usual rubric, okay? So for example, this is a our usual rubric where we I'm I'm working, okay? So lahat po ito teachers na nasa side, okay? That's our criterion. The content, organization, and recommendation. Yun lang po ang ilalagay nyo dun sa criterion um, aspect. Okay, so for example, criterion title, content, okay? You can also put here the percentage. For example, the percentage is uh, 20%, okay? Of uh, total, no? okay? And criterion description, what the uh, criterion is all about, what does it hope to measure? Etc. You can also put it here. Okay. Now, um, to start, once you have set up your criterion, okay, you will have to set up now the grade levels. Okay. So, for example, okay, our um, first grade level, okay, is uh, excellent. Okay. And we can assign here uh, that this um, I don't know um, uh, level is worth five points. So every time, uh, mahakwa siya ng excellent or excellent yung kanyang content. Five points siya kagad. Okay, you can put the description here, etc. Okay? Now, of course, you'll have to add uh, levels. Okay? So, for example, um, katap katapos ng excellent mo, four points. Okay? Very good. Okay? Siya naman yung level niya. No? Of course, we can use different levels um, for our ano, um, criterion. Okay? Uh, three, for example, will be good. Uh, it would be nice to put description teachers. Okay? Um, it really um, helps them okay? understand better no? okay? yung um, idea why it's a tree, why it's a good, etc. Okay? Two, for example, is um, uh, no, no, um, okay. good, visually satisfactory. Okay? 
And of course, okay, uh, the last one would be one and satisfactory. Okay. Satisfactory. Okay. So now the levels are good. Okay. And of course, okay, uh, that now gives you the levels no, for that ano, um, uh, criterion. Okay. Now you can also continue adding criterion. Say for example, okay, sa baba, meron ka makikita, add criterion. And our next criterion, for example, is... Um, our next criterion would be um, organization, okay? And this uh, is also worth, example, 20%. Okay? Uh, this one will not be computed actually by Google Classroom, but it just gives you uh, an idea, no? Okay? Or um, gives you, gives your students know how much that criterion is uh, will weigh into their assessments. Of course, you can continue giving here, uh, of course, no, creating the levels, okay? For your uh, criterion, okay, so five, for example, excellent, okay. and then four for very good, okay, and then um, three for uh, good, and then uh, two for satisfactory, okay, and then of course the last one is one for unsatisfactory. Okay, now uh, once we Launch these teachers, okay? This uh, Google Earth, uh, sorry, Google. This um, this rubric now will be attached on the assessment. Okay, I will show you that later on, okay? But first, let us save this, no? Okay. Um, our ano, no, our uh, assessment, okay? Okay. Let's uh, also, by the way, no? Okay. Sorry. Okay, let's just save this, okay? Okay, so it's uh, worth uh, 10 points, okay? So naka-attach na ngayon yung rubric natin. We can see it here, okay? I will show you later on how it looks like when someone submits their requirements, okay? We can also, by the way, um, um, uh, Google Classroom also has a built-in originality check. And ito ang uh, really good update teachers no, for all of us, okay? Last time, okay, um, like uh, two years ago when I did this uh, demonstration, no, okay, the originality check is only applicable, okay? Or plagiarism check is only available to Google Docs, okay? But now... Uh, Google uh, Classroom no, can also check originality check of Google Slides, okay? So if you assign, for example, presentation, okay, or research presentations, etc., okay, you can also already check no, uh, for plagiarism or plagiarized work in their assessment, okay? So hindi na, uh, it's not only anymore for documents, it's also for presentation, especially teachers, no? I know that you also require your students sometimes to submit presentations, so make it better, uh, better make it in Google Slides so Google Classroom can check for plagiarism, okay? So uh, when you turn that on, teachers, no? when you turn on that plagiarism checker, okay? Please ta uh, take note no, that, um, unfortunately, no, for fundamentals, I'm also in fundamentals, teachers, okay? You can only turn on originality check uh, for five assessments uh, for per class, okay? So um, do not like overuse it because we have an, 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 an limited number of originality checks. Okay? Um, the, I don't know, um, if you want more, then you'll have to upgrade to Education Plus. Okay? But otherwise, okay, yan, kailangan medyo tipid -tipid tayo in using originality check. Okay? So once you have used that, you will never you will not be able to um, use it again no? okay, for other classes. Okay? So example, okay, but again, that's just that's per Per class, okay. So if you have like um, uh, three major assessments, okay, that will definitely, um, ano, no, uh, fulfill it, okay. Um, five is already a good number, no, okay. Um, especially if we're just going to check on the the actual the graded assessments, okay. So let's just continue. And now, once we're done with the content, we're done with the settings, we are now ready to assign it, okay. So you now have an assign button here, okay. But please take note, okay that you also have other options aside from assigning it, okay? Which is to schedule or to save as a draft, okay? So once, for example, if you really want to post it right away, then you can do and assign it, okay? Now, if you want to schedule it some other time, for example, you, you, you're you doing this no, um, um, outside of class and um, you're not yet, um, you don't want them to see it yet, okay? You can always schedule, okay? So you can click schedule. And you'll be able to choose a date here when to uh, launch it. And what's good about scheduling teachers, 
it's not reliant, uh, it's not dependent on your, whether you have signal or you don't have a signal, okay? Because uh, once you schedule it, it's ready in the system of Google Classroom. It will publish it regardless if you have a signal or not, okay? So it will be posted. So don't worry. This is very helpful um, if you're loading your assignments no, and scheduling them ahead of time so that regardless, baka kahit makalimutan mo, mawalan ka ng internet connection, etc., you know that all of your works, all of your assessments, all of your classworks will actually be posted on time every day. Okay, So I usually recommend that teachers load your assessments, your works, one week before and just uh, I don't know, uh, schedule all of them. Okay? But for this time, we will not schedule so that I could show you okay, um, how it looks like you know, when someone submits their work. Okay? So I'm just going to post it. Okay? So I'm going to assign it. And that's now going to go in here into our stream. Okay, so you can see it here. Now, since we put it under assessments, it ends up under assessment. Look at how it's not many yet, no? But you can see that uh, your works are falling into the categories or topics we created. So you will see a very, very organized Google Classroom, okay? So now that it's been posted, no? Uh, your students can access that. Let me just access that um, from, my, um, uh, uh, ano, from my mobile phone, okay? And I will try to submit, okay? Example, okay? Handy na ko, okay? So now my student have submitted a work already, okay? If I click now this assessment, okay? I should now be able to see yan. See there? I have one turned in assessment or turned in assessment. So you have, uh, ano, data analytics, no? How many people have not submitted? How many people have submitted already? Etc. Okay? So what I'm going to do now is to uh, view the assignment. Okay, so I have now one assessment. I can I can click on that one. Of course, does not contain anything because I just uh, for for demonstration purposes I just simply click and submit that no without doing anything. Okay, so what I can do now is uh, to click on that one. Okay, and once you do teachers no okay, here's what it looks like. Okay, of course yan. Medyo nakamali lang pala tayo no kasi nalagay natin 100 points, 10 points lang pala tong, ano natin no uh, assessment natin. Okay. But anyway, so this is how it looks like you know, when you're checking okay, and when you attach a rubric, your rubric ends up on the left, right side of the paper. Okay? So you can easily just, oh, content niya, okay, uh, parang form points lang, very good. Okay? Organization, not, not good, not bad, so something in between, okay, good. Okay? So ganun lang mag-check and I can leave some comments, okay? uh, please um, um, like, um, support. Okay, your uh, answers okay. with evidence. That's it. Okay, so we can do that, or I can actually do no. Um, um, or leave some comments. No, again, hindi ko pa na try yung uh, uh, moat dito, but I think you can also already leave some moat comments no into your uh, students' work as well. Okay, so once I'm done, I'm going to submit this. Okay, and post this. Okay. Yung uh, comment ko, and I'm going to return it to my student. Okay, that's it. That's ganun lang kadali, no? So again, uh, all of this, no, uh, will be um, uh, mixed a lot, no, uh, your, uh, your, ano, no, your, uh, your time as a teacher, okay, uh, when you are checking your assessments of your students, okay? Right now, also, okay, since we turned on the, the what do you call this, the, the plagiarism checker, okay, makikita dito that uh, so far, this um, work of my of this student has no flag messages, okay? You will see there in red bold letters na merong mga flag messages. Ibig sabihin ng flag messages, there are some content of your student's work na uh, copied from the internet or from other sources that were not properly cited, okay? So that's, again, no? Such a comfort, no, for our teachers, uh, and we know how hard it is to uh, check papers, no, and we know that we share the same experience, okay? Um, for I don't know, for as educators, okay? So that's uh, how to create an assessment, okay? Yeah, okay. But before we continue, okay, exploring other assessment, although hindi na ako masyado mag-explore ng other assessment because halos pare-pareho na rin sila ng kanilang uh, abilities, no, okay, or settings. But first, let me just um. Um, I don't know, uh, answer some questions, okay? 
Okay. This one is from teacher. Yes, sir, Franco. Schedule of post to multiple classes allowed and the date must be within the current month. Maraming salamat for that, no? Um, and of course, okay, this one is... Okay, question. I'm just looking for some question, no? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, teacher Fedelina, okay? Sir, nahiwagaan kami minsan, nakalagay turned in, pero walang laman ng pinasa ng bata. Bakit po yaga nito? Teacher uh, Fedelina, don't doubt yourselves, okay? Ibig sabihin, the student did not actually put something in. Okay? That's that's the truth, no? okay? So baka uh, they were able to submit. Or sometimes what happens, Teacher Fedelina, is that uh, instead of, if you attach, for example, a template, the students do not use the template uh, from your Google Classroom and instead use another copy, from your, their Google Drive, sometimes it's not the same, okay? So um, always uh, ask your students if you, like example, attach a um, uh, a template that your students um, should use it. It will always appear their teacher, uh, ano, no, teacher feds, okay? So pag gumamit, pag naglagay ka ng template, the first thing that the students will see is a copy of your template, okay? So don't tell them, do not create your own because usually what happens, they create their own, okay? So sometimes... The turned in uh, um, um, a file does not contain anything. It's actually somewhere in their Google Drive. Okay. Yes, okay. So that's uh, I don't know uh, a reminder. So teachers, I always remind you, you know, do not like doubt yourselves, okay? Because um, usually, you no know, um, uh, teachers would doubt themselves and would think you no know, that um, it's something strong about uh, their ano uh, their um, um, their assessments, okay? Okay. So, teachers, let's further explore other things about classwork, okay? And this time, let's explore quiz assignment, okay? So, we we'll click here. Meron tayong option to assign a quick assign, uh, quiz assignment, okay? Now, there's really not much difference, but I'd just like to highlight, no, the, 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 the very obvious difference between assignment and quiz assignment, okay? But practically, they're almost the same, okay? But when you click on and... Um, uh, try to create an assignment, okay? Notice that you will actually have now a generated blank quiz. Okay? Okay, so that's uh, because uh, Google, uh, Google Classroom is uh, anticipating that you want to launch a quiz. Okay? And uh, of course, no, you can definitely use Google Class, uh, Google Form uh, for creating a quiz, okay? And here, okay, please take note that when you um, do this, no, okay, when you... Use the quiz assignment and then uh, use uh, Google Form. You can actually turn on what we call grade importing. Okay, so whatever the scores of your students in Google Form, okay, can actually be imported into your Google um, Classroom. Okay, so all their grades, all their scores, hindi mo na kailang copy and paste pa. Okay, so Google Classroom can also take charge of that, okay? Um, and everything else, teachers, aside from that, is almost the same. You have attachments right here below, okay? So in your quiz assignment, you can also attach um, uh, different files, okay? And on the right side, you have your settings for your uh, as, no, no, for your um, quiz assignment, okay? So same thing. The only difference lang talaga between assignment and quiz assignment is this. The attachment, no, the uh, Google Form attachment. Of course, you can always customize that no, by attaching your own Google Form, okay? And just the same, you can also attach your or import your grades, okay? So that's one, no? That's, um, that's another um, classwork that you might want to explore, okay? For this one, we'll not uh, continue with that one, okay? And of course, okay, aside from that, you can also explore question, okay? So question naman are easy, no? These are like, if you are like... Um, like us no, na gumagamit ng tinatawag na discussion boards, okay? Like a quick reflection, a quick question, a quick survey, okay? You can actually do this, okay? So you can uh, click question, for example, what um, did you learn today? You can actually do that, okay? For a quick reflection, okay? Uh, and here, you can put instruction, similar. You can also put like attachments, Google Drive files, okay, YouTube um, videos. Uh, you can also create your other files or Google files, etc. Okay? And here, kapag nag assign po tayo ng question, meron tayong option to students can reply to each other. Okay? Pwede, pwede mo tanggalin yan, pwede mo ipakita. And of course, you can also um, change, for example, if they can edit an answer. So for example, you launch a question, do you want them to be able to edit their answer? You can also check um, no 
If you tick it, they can edit their answer. And also, do not worry. Whenever you create a question, okay, students do not see their answers, the answers of other classmates, no, until um, uh, they answer their own. Okay, so this also protects, no, um, your uh, question if ever it's graded, okay, on uh, copying uh, other people's answers. Okay, so you can def definitely do this both for graded or ungraded works teachers. Okay. And, of course, uh, teachers, nandiyan din yung ating materials, okay? So, materials naman, teachers, are um, uh, are perfect if you want to, like, send materials to your students, okay? Uh, just take note that uh, materials does not have um, submissions, okay? So, do not use material if you intend uh, your students to submit something, okay? Because if it's just a material, it's just a material. It's either you're sending them a PDF of your lesson or a video that you want uh, you want them to watch, okay? Uh, etc. But otherwise, okay, um, if you want submission, then use assignment or quiz assignment, okay? Because there, those are the only two with, with submissions or even question as well. Materials does not have a submission, okay? And of course, the last one, teachers, is that you can also use, yung tinatawag natin, okay, uh, materials, okay? Ah, sorry, reuse post pala. <laughs> reuse post, okay? So you can also reuse posts from other classes, okay? So yan, pwede kang pumili ng class where you want to reuse post. For example, kuha tayo ng announcement from grade 10 ilang-ilang. That's my class, my, uh, class before. And there's only one worksheet there, okay? So I can also get that, okay? I can reuse that as part of my new class, okay? So, um... This is also perfect, no? Okay? Because meron kang reusing of posts, teachers, okay? What I actually also recommend is that if you are team teaching, that you build a Google Classroom for your team, okay? Wherein all of you would simply, um, nyare, ako yung naka-assign sa, um, sa quiz, no, for this uh, week, okay? Or um, uh, ako yung naka-assign naman for, or ikaw yung naka-assign for presentation or for, uh, materials no, for next week, okay? So we can easily just create all of those materials, okay, assessments in one classroom where all of us are teachers, okay? And we can simply reuse that and copy it no, in our classes, okay? So a perfect way of collaborating between teachers, okay? Para po yung mga materials nyo then are properly curated, no? And you can easily uh, work with your team, okay? Lalo na ngayon, no? Minsan na uh, hindi natin makita, mahirap hanapin yung mga files natin. So perfect way of uh, collaborating with your co-teachers, okay? So, yun natin kailangan. So, kahit ano na yung mga uh, mas advanced na LMS, no, nagagawa na ng paraan or may mga, ano rin, no, mga workarounds, okay, kay Google Classroom to be able to do those uh, things, okay? So, yan. Okay. So, um, so that's all for our classworks, okay? Um, and that's actually, no, uh, most of the things that I'd like to discuss, no, that's already almost, no, uh, our time, okay? Um, pero siguro lang, siguro last addition lang for us teachers is that meron tayo po sa ano, no, um, dahil ang Google Classroom natin also has now its own, um, uh, ano, no, um, focus and, ano, to, what do call this? exclusive meeting link, no, for, for your classes, okay? Take note that this is an uh, an a security uh, measure no na dinevelop ng Google. Okay, the reason why Google Classroom okay, or Google okay, inserted or integrated Google Meet no into our Google Classroom is to prevent those meetings that are being interrupted or being joined by unwanted individuals. Okay, so by generating your link here in your Google Classroom, students can easily jump into your calls. Okay, and what happens is that everyone who are in your class will be automatically admitted in that meeting without you admitting them one at a time okay but of course teachers no still following the protocol um, our um, uh, host first protocol okay um, wherein um, you have to go there first okay and you have to open the call for your students to be able to join pero wala nang admission no pagpasok mo dire-diretso na lahat ng students mo will be admitted now once you encounter someone that needs to be admitted yeah. Be careful because it means that that person does not belong to your class. Might have just got the link no somewhere, okay? Or might just have uh, joined no um uh, using um or hacking your your meeting. No? That now tells you that that student, okay, who needs to be admitted, okay, is not part of your class roster. Okay? Yeah, then ang ating uh, security measure din no, for our teachers. Okay? Ngayon, several other things that you might um 
I don't know, um, um, couple of um, things to explore as well in Google Classroom, okay? Mga recent updates din, no? Ang unang-una is that meron na rin tayo ngayong um, uh, roster syncing. But again, I'm, I, I told you, this is only available uh, for uh, Education Plus, okay? Meron na rin tinatawag tayong um, add-ons, okay? Or, um, uh, ano, no? Uh, kay Google Classroom, okay? Wherein you can add your favorite tools in Google Classroom. But we're still waiting because up until today, it's also still... Uh, only for uh, the Education Plus and Teaching Learning Upgrade, okay? Not, not yet for all other accounts, okay? So, yan po ang ating uh, some, uh, ano, no, um, um, recent upgrades no, sa ating Google Classroom, okay? But of course, no, we're hoping na sana add-ons, no, kasi sobrang laking tulong yan, that you can actually use different applications inside your Google Classroom, Okay? So, yan, teachers, uh, ilang ilan lang naman sa, ano, no, sa mga things that we can um, uh, explore further now, okay? I hope that those who already know how to use Google Classroom have been reminded about important features and details about Google Classroom, okay? Sa ating po mga um, um, new users, okay? At mga bago pa lang sa Google. I hope that you, um, ano, no, gain um, more understanding and a better understanding of the different features of Google Classroom, okay? Uh, and of course, um, we'll continue to give you updates no, via our um, uh, Facebook page, okay? Kaagapay uh, Teacher Support, okay? For any details, okay, that um, uh, being upgraded or updated in our Google Classroom. Pero siguro lang, bago din ako mag, ano, no, um, mag uh, tapos, no, okay? Is that I'd also like to share some strategies, no, on how I use uh, Google Classroom, okay? Because ngayon, ang, ang ating uh, ultimate question now is that, What's Google Classroom for when it we're going back to face-to-face, uh, -face, no? Or mag, mag on-site learning naman na tayo, okay? Um, and on November 2, no? As I mentioned, no? Okay? Sana ma-extend. Pero on November 2, uh, will now be, um, uh, before all of us, no? Private and public schools, okay? Are all mandated to go back on-site, okay? So, how else can Google Classroom be no uh, of use to you as a teacher okay of course for the next few months for all of us kasi naka hybrid pa tayo google classroom can definitely assist you because all your asynchronous tasks or all your online tasks no for your students can be delivered using google classroom okay so you go face to face on site for your synchronous sessions okay and then you go use google classroom for your um online activities so Google Classroom will definitely still be uh, relevant no uh, during the hybrid modality in our uh, ano, no, um uh, classes okay uh, but the question now is okay paano pagdating ng November 2 kung saan lahat tayo online na ay on site na okay so what can you do with your Google Classroom and how can Google Classroom still help you um, as an educator okay the first one is that Google Classroom is a perfect okay venue for creating training programs okay so, kung nyari meron kayong mga webinars for your um, training programs for your teachers, I hope, for example, kung meron kayong mga teachers who are in charge of training, that by now, nakapag-create na kayo ng Google Classroom for all your training programs para lahat ng materials, communications, okay, are all there. So, it could be like a Google Classroom for the entire faculty uh, and you can simply call it like, example, professional development program. Okay? So, every time you have a training uh, every time you have um, uh, things to share, no, okay, you can professionally share it using Google Classroom. Okay. Plus, again, if it's a, a training, for example, if it's a three-day training, um, it's important that there is a continuous uh, communication to the all participants. So perfect then ang Google Classroom. Ginagamit ko to uh, for my uh, Google Workspace uh, training for the Google Certified Educators Program. Ayan, no, from Teacher Desiree Dino, they're using it for their inset. Very good, no? Teacher, um, teacher Desiree, okay? Yes, no, teacher, Ma kay teacher Annabelle, ayan, okay? Um, diba? Sobrang napakagandang gamitin, okay? Kasi it allows you to communicate, no? Hindi kailangan nag email lagi or kaya ano, no? Um, uh, ano, no? Um, kailangan isi-send lagi sa email or kaya ibang po sa Facebook or sa message, etc. We know, for example, if there's a training, we all proceed to Google Classroom to know the links, the materials, okay? Even like um, a recording of the videos can also be posted there. Okay? So teachers can easily go back to the training program anytime. For all we know, if you're done with that, for example, Teacher Desiree, Teacher Annabelle, okay, your Google Classroom for training programs could easily become like a repository of training programs 
which teachers can also go no um um in their own pace okay para next time hindi na kailangan ulitin yung program pwedeng pumunta na lang yung teacher doon mag-review ng mga recorded video recordings okay answer some evaluation etc so they can also uh, participate no uh, in your training programs okay and of course pwedeng pwedeng rin siyang gamitin as a learning hub okay so hindi kailangan itapon okay um, so you can also also no continue building materials okay assessments okay uh, in your um, uh, Google Classroom, okay, which students can visit whenever they're, um, for example, missing requirements or missing le um, lessons, okay? Say, for example, kahit naka on-site na tayo, okay? Uh, full on-site na tayo, okay? And you want to have like um, like uh, an online activity, you can easily communicate that in Google Classroom. Say, for example, may nag-absent because we don't know, no? Okay? Um, COVID is still here, okay? So kahit mag-on-site tayo by November 2, 2022, um, biglang may, may mga students na nagkaroon ng COVID, they have to be quarantined for like uh, days, no? You can easily just refer them, okay? Since you were absent for five days, go to Google Classroom. I prepared materials there, okay? Um, that you can use in order to catch up, okay? Yes, no? Okay? Yes, no, teacher uh, Linda, no? And of course, okay, the last thing, no, is that you can also use it for supporting hybrid and blended learning. Lalo na magbe blended learning tayo, teachers, okay? So again, your, sing the, your asynchronous materials, okay, can easily be delivered in Google Classroom, okay? You, you're, you're, you, you don't need to look for any other platform, okay? Um, of course, lalo na if we're looking for free, no, free platform, kasi most of the really advanced no, elements, of course, there are advantages in using those. Say, for example, no, uh, D2L, no, really a good uh, platform, okay? Uh, even, for example, Graphy, no, will actually be collaborating with Graphy late na, um, um, next month, okay? But um, if, for example, financial concerns is our concern, okay, then using Google Classroom should be an option for all of us, okay? Yan, okay? So, uh, hindi mawawala, teachers, no? Uh, in other words, okay? We don't need to dump. We don't need to abandon. We don't need to forget, no, Google Classroom because it's it has different uses beyond uh, for, uh, ano, no, online learning, okay? So, there's so much more, okay, to Google Classroom, no, um, as, ano, no, for us uh, educators, okay? So, teachers, okay, that's it for our Google Classroom complete walkthrough. I hope uh, that you uh, no, no, you you were able to pick up uh, something new, something uh, refreshing, okay? um, something to remind you no, about Google Classroom for our call, ano, uh, users already. Yan si teacher Desiree, no, mukhang uh, talagang constant users na ng Google Classroom. I hope medyo na-refresh tayo about uh, some functionalities. Okay? For our new users of Google Classroom, I hope that you're able to use uh, this um, this walkthrough no, as a reference okay? as you start your journey with Google Classroom. Yes, no, Teacher Annabelle, that's actually a good suggestion as well, okay? Using it for remedial activities, no? Lalo na, for example, right now, our teachers from the public school system no, are required to do remedial classes, okay? So you can build an entire course, okay, in Google Classroom, okay, that your students can go through, no, okay, and support remedial classes so that whatever you can cover, kasi 15 days of remedial classes, won't actually be enough no, to bridge okay, whatever we have missed no, during the pandemic school years. Okay, so um, perfect, perfect uh, ano, no, a suggestion, Teacher Annabelle. Okay, thank you so much for that as well. Okay, um, we can use that no, definitely. Okay, so at this point, teachers, okay, before we um, head on to our evaluation, okay, uh, we can no, um, I can still entertain some questions okay, from our teachers. Okay, you might have some questions okay, or other concerns. Okay. Um, or other things, no? Yes, no. 100% refresh, okay? According to Teacher Joanne Labaw. Maraming salamat, teachers, no? Okay, for, um, for that, no? Okay? Um, it, 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 ano, no? It, it uh, motivates us, no? To, um, to continue what we're doing. Thank you so much, okay? Okay. Um, is there a shortcut, uh, according to Teacher Annabelle, is there a shortcut to arrange the classwork from the oldest to post to present aside from dragging it down? Um, unfortunately, Teacher Annabelle, no, uh, from uh, from my experience, wala pa. Talagang the wait for you to um, to rearrange no, is to really drag and drop the the contents of your um, topics. Okay, so that's the only way, no, for now. Okay, uh, the easiest way. Okay, for now. Okay, um, or um, if it's if ever, no, Teacher Annabelle, um, 
you can actually already arrange okay? maybe your uh, your topics no, from the get go para naka properly arrange na rin siya pero yun nga no uh, if ever there's something to be moved talagang dragging dra- down and up lang talaga uh, on our, our way of reorganization okay yan maraming salamat po yan thank you teachers no medyo napaka-comforting ng mga comments niyo po sa chat okay okay so yan okay so teachers okay if um that's actually ano no uh, or there are other questions or concerns okay, that you might want to ano no to um to share okay or to um to give to uh, or to ask no okay yeah narami nga to uh, oy face to face na this august na ito so blended na lang kami ni love <laughs> yako face to face na teachers hindi ba di pa ano pa lang uh, november 2022 pa november 2 2022 pa tayo lahat required okay so are or are there uh, schools already who are implementing full face to face? Okay, thank you so much teacher Marilu Larin for that no, okay? Uh for that comment no. Okay, this one is from teacher Ha Hor Shawa. Uh organized inter- na yes indeed no. Um interactive games and still motivation among students, okay? Something like I'm thinking teacher Hor, no, uh, something like um like uh, maybe enrichment activities, like example after your on-site or synchronous sessions. Okay, okay, class, I have some enrichment activities in our Google Classroom. Please do check it out. You no, know, so perfect also, you no, know, perfect suggestion for that one. Okay. This one is um what's the difference between hybrid and blended learning? Okay. Now, teacher Seti, when you talk about hybrid learning, okay, you're talking about uh modality of the students are different. Okay, not the act, the ano, the delivery of learning. Okay, so when you say, for example, blended game, okay? you either have an on-site student, online students, or both. Okay, so like for example, in our case, teacher Seti, uh, in our school, no, um, where I'm working, Kim, okay? simultaneously we have students who are attend, uh, who are in the classroom on-site, okay. Uh, who are who we call roomies? Okay, yun nata yun po ang term namin no, sa mga on-site students namin, roomies. And meron kami simultaneously online students. Okay, ang tawag naman namin sa kanila because we're using Zoom. Okay, are roomies. Okay, so we have roomies and roomies. Okay, um, and for example as well, teacher um, teacher Seti, no, meron ding ibang schools. Okay, aside from students being able to choose whether they're online or on-site. Okay. There are also choices wherein students can choose both, okay? That they attend on-site and they also attend online, no? In different schedule, okay? That's uh, that's naman the case, no, for Ateneo, okay? So we have students who are online, purely online, purely on-site, and then we have uh, both, okay? That's for hybrid, okay? Now, the difference now when you talk about blended learning is that basically when you say blended learning is that to deliver learning, you are uh, ano no, uh, combining face-to-face encounters and online learning. Okay? So, merong gray area, okay, teacher uh, Seti, okay? Pero basically, you know, that's how, uh, uh, ano no, um, ang, that's how it's, uh, ano no, uh, set up. So, hybrid learning uh, is still very strong in synchronous sessions, okay? While blended learning, it actually emphasizes asynchronous approach. Okay? That's uh, the basic difference, okay? So, mas nauna nating nakilala si blended learning. Even before the pandemic, there is blended learning, okay? Teaching uh, on-site or face-to-face and then giving contents, no? Um, online, that's blended learning. Flip learning is a kind of blended learning, okay? But again, uh, hybrid, no? Um, takes into account, no? How your students are accessing learning. Either on-site, are they um, online, okay? Or both. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Maraming salamat no uh, for that appreciate uh, uh, appreciation post no. Nakataba ng puso. Okay. Um teacher Seti, let me know if I answered your question or if there are any other questions that you might want to ask no, okay? About that, okay? Other questions or maybe uh concerns before we proceed with okay? Um sorry, proceed to our evaluation link, okay? Okay. So I think there are no more questions, no, okay? So again, teachers, maraming maraming salamat, no? And thank you so much for joining our session for today, okay? Uh, next week, there will be no Saturday session, okay? Uh, we're skipping our next week, no, okay? Because uh, we have a full three-day sessions next week, okay? For our student engagement with ClassPoint, that's our CPD event, our second CPD event, okay? 
Um, so no Saturday session next week. We have a Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday session next week. Okay? We will resume with July series on our next last week of July, uh, July 28th and July 30. Okay, uh, that will be focusing on Google Forms. Okay, um, there are a lot of things new about Google Forms. I'm excited to share it uh, to you. Okay, and then we'll cap off our July series with a discussion or complete walkthrough of Google Sites. No, so I will uh, once again no. Uh, introduce to you um, or uh, refresh no, how to use Google Sites and how to build uh, websites no, using Google Sites. Okay. So yeah, thank you so much. Okay? Yes, no, Teacher Rose and uh, Rosanis were the same. Okay, we also called uh, call it high flex in our case. Okay, yeah. Okay, so teachers, okay? Um, if there are no other concerns and questions, okay, I think we can already um end our session here okay so i'm now going to leave you with our evaluation form okay so you can um evaluate no but again marami salamat teachers okay for all um, um for uh your attendance for the day for joining our session okay for all your insights in the chat and your um your uh, sharings in the chat okay so now let's proceed to our evaluation link okay um for the next session. But anyway, okay, bago lang tayo, siguro ako finally magpaalam, no? Please do follow us at uh, uh, facebook.com uh, uh, at uh, slash kaagapay teacher support, okay? Please also follow or uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's www.youtube.com slash c slash franco nicolo adun or just simply search for my name in YouTube, no? It should appear there, okay? And here's your evaluation link, teachers, okay? Please do let me know if it's working or if you can access the link, no? For our session, uh, today, okay? So, uh, don't forget that this evaluation link will be my basis, okay, in providing you your um, certificate of participation for today's session. Thank you so much, Teacher Seti uh, Abdullah, no, for, for that, okay? Teacher Seti, okay, <clears throat> uh, for, for that, ano, no, uh, please again also invite your uh, co-teachers, no, uh, your okay, uh, family members to our um, uh, YouTube channel, okay? So, maraming maraming salamat po. Okay, so teachers, okay, with that, okay, I leave you with all of the learnings I have shared with you today, okay, so please, as I always tell you, all our trainings are for free, but always uh, try to share it with other people, okay, um, and become no, um, uh, a sharer of information and learnings as well, okay, and as I always tell you, please stay safe, uh, please stay negative from COVID-19, but please stay positive in life, okay, so thank you again, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat.